Earlier, you learned about Christopher Columbus, an Italian explorer who sailed to represent Spain's interests. Today, you'll learn about John Cabot, another Italian explorer who sailed to represent England's interests. We know very little about early years of Cabot's life. Historians believe that he was born in Genoa, Italy, the same birthplace of Christopher Columbus. He was also born about the same time as Columbus. In his early years, John Cabot was known by his Italian name, Giovanni Caboto. He lived for many years in the Italian city of Venice where he worked as a merchant and a sailor. His work in Venice led him to travel along the coasts of countries in the Eastern Mediterranean Sea where he further developed his navigational skills. As a merchant, he, he began to think that he could obtain spices more quickly and cheaply by finding a westward water route that would take him to the east. In 1493, Cabot and many Europeans learned that Christopher Columbus had an idea very similar to Cabot's, finding a water route to Asia by traveling west. After several years in Venice, Cabot relocated to Bristol, England in 1496. Shortly thereafter, Cabot took steps to embark on a journey of his own, but one that was slightly different than Columbus's. Cabot had a simple idea. He knew that the Earth was spherical, and he knew that one of the properties of a sphere is that the distance around it is greatest in the middle, or at its circumference, and less on the top or bottom. If you apply this basic geometry to the Earth, it means that the circumference of the Earth is greatest at the equator and is significantly less north or south of the equator. Think about a basketball. The circumference of a basketball, or the distance around it if you measure it in the very middle, is 30 inches. The distance around the same ball if you measure at a point closer to the top is only about 15 inches. Cabot thought Columbus had made a strategic mistake in his attempt to sail to the East Indies. Columbus had sailed in the middle latitudes, close to the equator, where the distance would be longest. Cabot thought he could get to the East Indies faster by sailing at a more northerly latitude, where the distance would be shorter. He proposed heading north, hoping to find a northwest passage to Asia and the East Indies. Cabot tried to find sponsors and investors to support his voyage to find the Northwest Passage. In 1496, Henry VII, the King of England, decided to sponsor Cabot. Merchants in Bristol helped support the voyage as well. Henry VII gave Cabot permission to explore and claim unknown lands for England. Cabot was also encouraged to bring any merchandise he acquired back to Bristol, England. Cabot was told he would enjoy a great share of the trade profits if the voyage were successful. Cabot attempted three voyages across the Atlantic. The first voyage attempt from Bristol, England was not a success. Cabot and his men encountered terrible weather and ran short on supplies. In addition, Cabot had some disagreements with his crew regarding his route. With all the misfortune that took place at the onset of the voyage, Cabot eventually decided to turn around and sail back to Bristol. Cabot's second voyage was more successful. Again, he had only one ship. It was a small ship called the Matthew with a crew of just 18 men. Cabot and his men set sail from Bristol in May of 1497. They sailed past Ireland and across the Atlantic. On June 24th, they sighted land. Historians think Cabot made landfall somewhere in the area of southern Labrador, Newfoundland, or Cape Breton Island in present-day Canada, but the exact location isn't known for certain. Cabot didn't spend much time on land. It appears that he and his men got off the ship only once and didn't wander inland more than a few hundred feet. They didn't encounter any Native Americans but found signs of their settlement. Cabot claimed the land for England, collected some fresh water, and got up back on board his ship. Cabot and his men spent time exploring the coast of the area now known as the Cabot Strait, a channel 60 miles wide between Cape Breton Island and, the, and southwestern Newfoundland. On their exploration of the coast, Cabot and his crew discovered some, of the, some very good fishing grounds. 
As far as we know, Cabot was the first European to set foot in this part of North America since the Vikings had around the year 1000 CE. Cabot returned to England and went to visit King Henry VII certain that he had explored the northeast coast of Asia. He reported to the king that he discovered wonderful land in a place with a good climate. He mentioned the superb fishing grounds of which England could make great use. The discovery made King Henry VII very happy because at the time of Cabot's voyage, fish was a very expensive commodity. Seeing that his discoveries were welcomed, Cabot decided to return to the land he explored and sail until he reached another land in Asia full of spices and riches, the land that today is called Japan. In February 1498, he received permission from King Henry VII to embark on another voyage. Very little is known of this third voyage. Historians don't know for sure, but this voyage probably involved around 200 men and maybe five ships. Unfortunately, when Cabot and his expedition set off, one of his ships became damaged and the whole fleet had to stop in Ireland due to several severe storms. Cabot was supposedly not heard from again, and some historians think he even died on that voyage. Other historians think that he returned from his voyage and lived in London for a short time until approximately 1500. There's little evidence about this voyage or the whereabouts of Cabot after the voyage, so historians can't really be sure of its outcome. John Cabot was like Christopher Columbus in many ways. Both men were born in Genoa, Italy. Both men convinced foreign kings to sponsor their explorations. Both men attempted to sail to the East Indies and ended up finding something else altogether. Cabot's explorations proved very important for England. His attempts to find a northwest passage to the East Indies failed, but finding and claiming land on the continent of North America instead were essential for England to later establish British colonies.